have a, our address at um, where we, our house is 440. It's going to be about 110. <laughs> uh, we're going to have 200 people down from 1500. And so it's really a dramatic difference in administration. All the costs that we're making in our budget, and we get on to that, I'm trying to keep on the sustainability. All the costs that we're making are cuts to the budget. We're trying to really uh, do it outside of programmatic change, but cuts. Teacher, we don't want to cut teachers. We're trying to really, really um, do everything we can to keep uh, the, the resources in the classroom. So. But we have no authority to raise taxes, and that is one of, I think, uh, we're the only district in the state of Pennsylvania with not having that ability. The other 500 or 499 school districts have the ability to, but well, they can't meet their budget, they raise their millage or their taxes. We have to go to city council, we have to go to all of our funding sources. Our homeroom ch charter, the way the city is set up, um, is intentionally done that way. And one thing, in 2002, we had a huge building program, $1.9 billion, and the, the initiative for the program was to create more choices in high school for students to um, K-8, to expand K-8s, and to get rid of middle schools and have faster mm -hmm. modernization. Then we decided, we had another uh, epiphany with, during this program, where we moved away from, uh, we wanted to do reduce class sizes, so we did reduce class sizes. Then we did a facilities master plan and realized that we had 70,000 excess seats in our district. So we had way, we had felt a lot more than we really needed because we didn't have a facilities master plan. So we are getting out of these facilities because we have all this excess spaces. And really what it was is we need to really, it's really a, a, a planning issue. You know, there are certain regions that are overcrowded, so how do we do redistricting, how do we boundary to get out of this? Because we have enough space, it's just not necessarily utilized in the right areas. As we've been going out to the communities, we looked at utilization. One of the things that we came up with was a formula uh, that took the emphasis away so much from the building and also included the school performance. So we're looking at two different indexes to look at schools that we're gonna make investments are. In. One is what is their capital need? It's called a facility condition index is what we created. And then a school performance index. And those are the two factors that we're now weighing to see where we're gonna put our, our investments. In the uh, building program initiatives is that we began to, we created best practices, we created new standardization. And so we were able to incorporate energy efficient design in our standards. So it became commonplace, it wasn't uh, when we were building a new school, we had these already to give to our professionals. We, a few years ago, joined the pilot program for need for existing buildings because most of our stock of our buildings is existent, and that's really the operations and the maintenance of how do we make this, uh, how do we adapt this to go forward to make it more energy efficient and a healthier environment uh, for our students. We never have enough money to do everything that we need, and so we try to be resourceful and find other funding sources for our programs. And I was able to find on the internet, I literally went through anything in Pennsylvania that was related to energy, and I found this, called the organization, and um, was able to make an application within a week. We had a window of a week to do it, and we were lucky enough to receive this grant. So we essentially paid for the uh, geothermal with a grant. That was really helpful. And I think, as I said, it helped bring a mindset to not just capital, but to people, to our operations and maintenance folks about thinking about how do we get to other systems